Hey everyone, Eldrick here, and welcome back to more Hillsign. We are continuing our ninja playthrough. But right now we're going to just do a little recap here of what happened at the end of the previous episode of Part 1. So, uh, we went through our first uh, scouting mission, and we picked up some clues and some signs, and we took this stuff back to Zoe at the bar. And we turned those things in, and got some money and some experience from her. And she asked us to purchase a shadow page from Redback, which we done here. So we sell one sign, I think. Yeah, we sell both of them. And we pick up the shadow page. We get 175 bucks from her and some XP. And we talk to the bouncer, and we have to defeat four ghouls and bring back four ghoul parts to him. So that's where we ended at the first part of our episode of this playthrough. So we unlocked sweeping missions, and we completed two missions right there in just going through the first house. So that wasn't too bad, I don't think. We also learned the treasure hunter skill, which when we click on it there, we gained it. And that skill there, just to reiterate, is going to allow us a 100% chance to find rarer signs, which when we find those said signs, is going to be a more valuable profit for us when we go to sell them. Alright, so here's about where we ended on our video. So let's finish waiting on the load screen here and we'll go into our second house. Okay, so my game plan for right now is to just go through some of these scouting missions and gain enough money to be able to purchase the Straya pistol, the 9mm, because I want to be able to do a little bit more damage rather than the little pea shooter that we have right now of a 22. And um, it should come in handy when we start facing the ghouls, which we are going to be doing here shortly. Probably after this house or a second house. So uh, let's go on in here. Let's first check for our signs. If there's any footprints for EMF detectives out here. Okay, so we're getting something right here. And we've already found a note. And we're also getting another reading here. And um, if you could see there, the value of that item that we just picked up was a little bit more than the ones that we had found in our first house. So that treasure hunter skill really comes in handy if you learn it and when you're finding these types of things right here so right there that's a uh, a valuable um item right there that we're going to be able to sell and get a little bit more extra money out of it so we're just going to scout around um i'm not really going to be too worried about our gadgets just yet I'm going to focus more on being able to deal a little bit more damage because if I want to, when we start facing the ghouls here soon, I'm going to be able to take those out and almost as soon as you go into a house within a room or two, you're going to face a ghoul. And if you successfully take one of those down, you'll get a ghoul part which you can also take back to Redback at the bar and sell for $25. Now, $25 bucks does not sound like a whole lot, but when you throw that in with finding some signs or, you know, what you may already have saved up, you can kind of afford some better items and weaponry and that sort of thing, and hopefully you'll also be getting some experience and have some skill points and you can you know spec out your character however you like but um, I'm gonna just pretty much save up and get the uh, the best possible uh, nine millimeter that we can at the moment we're gonna have to complete a quest with the gun shop keep um, and pay him 200 bucks or so and uh, go through another mission or so and that will unlock some of the uh, 
high tier items and weaponry that uh, we can access so far in the uh, early access of the release. So we're taking out some of these little spiderlings here. Again, um, I'm not too much worried about dodging and or taking damage right now. We have two stim packs if I need to use them. And really all that we may face here is just the spiderlings and some blood crawlers. Which shouldn't be too too awfully bad to deal with right now at the moment. Even though we're using this little 22 gun. Now if you're hearing that audio signal right now, that is something that if you had the parabolic mic gadget, you would be able to scout around this house and also find other additional signs or clues with that. Um, and when you see that your character is breathing out air, those are signals that a thermal clue is somewhere within the vicinity of the area that you're in. Um, and personally, I despise having to find the thermal clues because those things just annoy me. And there's, I think, only like one or two um, thermal gadgets that you can purchase right now. And when you get into the hunting missions, that, you know, it's just static and it's just kind of annoying. So we're going to get ready to leave here. We got several signs out of this mission and killed several critters. We gained 45 XP and made about 68 bucks. And we're about halfway to leveling up to level 5. So let's get on out of here. Go back to the bar and we'll sell off the stuff that we found to Redback and get a little bit more extra money in our pockets. So there we go. And we're gonna... I don't know if I need any ammo. Okay, so here's where I was talking about earlier about where we have to do a quest for the shopkeeper in the gun shop. So what we have to do in that quest, we have to pay him 200 bucks and basically he's going to talk about something going on down at the docks and a shipment coming in and whatnot and that, you know, when we do that and the game progresses a little bit further, his other items are going to open up in the shop. So let's just ignore all that right now and just hop into another mission here. So we're going into our third house. And after this one, we should be able to afford our 9mm that we have our eye on. And one tip that I can give people that may be new to this game is that don't go into a house expecting to find every single sign at the very beginning. Because for one, there's going to be items that you cannot find because you don't have the proper equipment to find that item. Like, you know, the parabolic mic or the thermals. So, just get in and get what you can. Maybe kill whatever type of critters that you can for some experience and whatnot. And get back out to your van and go sell that stuff redback and just build up some money so that you can afford better equipment. Right, so we have some spiderlings here. I think there's like three or four here. Alright, we took out two. I think there's three. Okay. So we'll wander on back down the hallway here towards our entrance and check this one out. And we're getting a reading here. And we also have some tracks here with their black light. So um, let's just kind of see where we're going here. And we got something. We got a symbol. Not too bad. So if we don't die, we got 17 bucks or so in our pocket. And if you can hear that audio clue again, that means that if we had the parabolic mic, we would be able to search for a possible clue, but where we don't have one right now, um, that's one 
sign that we cannot pick up right now. So that all kind of goes hand in hand with what I was saying earlier about, you know, don't expect to get every single thing in the house when you start off at the beginning of the game. Just get what you can with whatever types of gadgets that you have equipped and uh, get out of the house. As you can see, I'm trying to take out this blood crawler here that spawned on us in the room. And so he went under the bed, but he's going to come out through the doorway there that we entered the bedroom. Then. So let's take this thing out. There we go. And continue searching for this other sign or clue that we're getting a reading on with our EMF detector. And it's somewhere over here. There it is. And it's a valuable Ouija board. So there we go. Alright, so let's search a few more areas and then we'll get on out of this house because I think I'm getting close to finding everything that I can with our black light and the EMF detector. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video here and I'll meet you at the contract screen. Alright, so we raked in about 155 bucks on that house. And we're one point shy of gaining a level. That's a shame. Okay, let's head up to our guns and bait shop talk to the shopkeep and purchase the 9mm that we had our eyes on and we'll sell our pocket pistol and get rid of that little 22 pea shooter and we'll purchase some 9mm ammo so now we're gonna be able to, to do a little bit more damage and fare a little bit better against some ghouls Alright, so now that we have a new weapon, let's head into our first sweeping mission, and we're going to take on some ghouls here. We'll see how successful we are. We may be able to take one down, but we're going to try for two. Now, the thing with the ghouls is that their movement pattern isn't so bad once you learn it, because they'll do a dash a type of attack towards you and try to hit you and then they'll jump onto the nearest wall and then that'll give you a little bit of time to actually help them with a few bullets reload whatever stem pack up if you've taken damage and then they basically repeat that that type of move set now I would say one thing that you need to watch out when you get further into these missions um, later in the game with these ghouls and the giant spiders is that sometimes they like to jump at you and open another door and that could spawn another creature towards you and then it's just a bad day from there all right let's take out these spiderlings and look how fast we're taking those out now like one to two hits and we also gained our level so that's nice now let's head in the house and trigger a ghoul there he is all right so there he jumps on the ceiling or the wall, he jumps at us, and he jumps back on top of that wall. And basically it just repeats. So you just have to get your timing down. And they shouldn't be too bad at all. And once you get into, like, if you go into the heavy armor, um, you know, you can maybe survive two to three, maybe four hits against a ghoul with the light armor, like if you have the hoodie on like I do. But when you get the heavier armor, you can take, you know, four to five or more hits against them. So they don't really become too bad of a threat. But sometimes in the future, you start facing like they start coming out in twos. And that can sometimes be a problem if um, their timing is off and it just gets you in a bad rhythm of your dodges and whatnot. And there we go, we just took out two ghouls, like that, with our uh, 
new 9mm. And if we want to, we can take those back to Redback and sell them to them for 25 bucks a piece. And we also gained 54 experience and we were only in the house for a little over 2 minutes. So let's head to our skill tree here as we have one skill point available. And I think I'm going to go with the learning the heavy armor. And the reason why I'm doing that is because right now I'm not going to be in the house long enough to really be using the health packs just yet. I'm going to save that up for a little bit and uh, purchase some heavier armor first. Now you don't have to sell these things to Redback like I did, but you know I'm just wanting the money right now. So let's check out this uh, body armor first. So there's our highest heavy armor that we can buy right now and that's the security vest. After we complete this particular mission by turning in four ghoul parts to the bouncer, the gun shopkeeper will open up these other items to where we could buy the assault vest or whatever it's called. Whatever the best uh, heavy armor is. Alright, so we'll just buy the um, and equip the Kelvlar helmet. And we will end here today, everyone. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please be safe, keep gaming, happy holidays, and I'll see you guys next time for some more Hell Sign as we continue on with our ninja playthrough. Take care and bye-bye.